This video is sponsored by Squarespace. From website and online store to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful presence online or run your business. More on this later, but for now, pasta. Hey guys, salut, this is Alex. Welcome back to the dry pasta series. Today, I want to build a pasta cutter, something I would attach at the end of my extruder and that would cut pasta while I'm relaxing, basically. I'm just fed up with being at, at the exit of my little pasta extruder with my little knife. That's not how they do it in pasta factories. They have rotating pasta cutter. In the previous episode, I realized that if I want an automatic pasta cutter, I'm gonna have to build one myself because for my machine, it just doesn't exist. It might be a little more complicated than I thought, but it can't be rocket science either. So let's just make one. This is the die holder that screw onto my machine. I made this 3D printed part. It just clicks like this. A little further away, I'm gonna place this bad boy. Now, obviously this motor needs a cutter, which I have 3D printed too. And then as the pasta cutter spins, it's cutting pasta. I can just leave it on, go and make myself a nice cocktail. which is never, ever, ever gonna happen. But we all have dreams, right? I don't even dream about this. I dream about this. <laughs> all right, so this is gonna be attached to my pasta machine. You've got the die here, you've got the die holder. You've got my little contraption on top of it. You need to picture pasta dough flowing through the dye and being cut by this magnificent contraption. Let's say we want to make longer shapes. We should then be cutting less often or spinning slower. I can do that. The problem that I'm facing at the moment is that my super smart contraption can only go so slow. And it still is gonna be too fast to make the right length when it comes to meze manike, like the half rigatoni that I wanna make. So I'm thinking, if it's cutting too often, I can divide that by half. Oh man, it's never gonna be strong enough. Okay, I just need to change the motor, maybe make something out of metal for this. But the spirit is there. Our spirit is still alive, okay? Our will to move forward and not to accept. All right, so the new motor has been installed. I don't know if I'm gonna have the torque required to cut pasta. I don't know if I'm gonna have the right speed. There's only one way to find out. Let's just install this onto my pasta extruder and see how it goes. If everything goes well, pasta dough should flow through the die being cut by the uh, stepper motor, fall onto this slide and in the box. And I should be relaxing next door. Three, two, one. Uh, so basically you saw it, that was a resounding success. I made a batch of dough and this new prototype. So I've taken a slightly different approach with this one. It's uh, I'm using a different motor, it's a servo motor now. But also the blade it has a very specific shape. It will cut with a progressive curve. But also it will get closer and it will press harder onto the pasta die as we are getting closer to the point. Beware pastificios of Italy. A new era has begun. There's a new player on the map. Right. 
I feel a bit like I'm in a dead end. I tried a motor, I tried a beefier motor, I tried a beefier motor, but now I'm kind of stuck. I mean, there might be another way, but it's very, very old school. I should just try it. Now, this is the beast I intend to use. <laughs> This new pasta cutter is based around a wiper motor. These have tons of torque. And I'm thinking if this doesn't work, I might just give up, okay? As always, I'm purging the machine first. And then... Oh, we are that close. That close we are. There is plenty torque with my new machine. The problem was a, a lack of sharpness, basically. So I've attached a little piece of brass to my 3D printed blade. Now this should be cutting way better than the PLA that I was using previously. So this. Lord, have mercy on me. Potentially do it. It's definitely scraping the board. Let's install the motor and the springy blade. I don't know if it's gonna work, but still, I'm proud of this. I don't want to sound dramatic, but before I start the whole thing, if this doesn't work, this is the end of the pasta cutter, okay? I gotta move on. I can't just keep making new prototypes on this. There are other projects, other part of videos require my attention. So this is my best attempt. You don't need to see my face. I'm gonna be scared the whole time. <laughs> Well, it is cutting, for sure. Now, why are the pasta getting stuck to it? That's just not bad. Oh, f this is the best I've done. Well, at the moment, it's my destiny is pretty much sorted out. I'm gonna have to cut pasta with a knife. On the bright side, I may just have invented a new pasta shape. Well, I don't know if you're familiar with Maltagliati, where it's basically various cuts of pasta, like poorly cut. Well, this right here, I should call it Malextrudi. I really gave it my best. I'm gonna have to call it a day. <sighs> so. This is me a few days later. I know I said I wasn't gonna make any more prototype, but clearly I lied. If you wanna play it soft, you can do it. If you wanna play it hard, on my own. I said I'm game. The effect doesn't work as well as I thought. The problem I think I was facing was the lack of precision and the introduction of a little play. Just a tiny little amount of play in between these moving parts. Think about a pair of scissors, for example. If you want them to be shearing, to be cutting properly, there needs to be absolutely no play between the two blades. Otherwise, the paper just gets stuck and bent, but it doesn't get cut. Theory, oh lovely theory. Here goes 
nothing of something. Here goes something, obviously. I believe in life. So this is too fast. I'm gonna go slower. That should be good. Sorry guys, I'm not even gonna pretend to be modest. This is absolutely spectacular to my eyes. So the blade I use at the moment is great, but if I were to make it even better, I would probably smooth it out, get rid of any protruding bit so that it doesn't catch on pasta, and also I would sharpen it on my Japanese whetstone. I'm gonna keep this for later, as for now, it works. I'm done with pasta cutter for at least three months. It's funny to think that at some point I was this close to giving up. I might just give up. Turns out all I needed was just a night of sleep, some rest, just to allow my brain to process and to come up with a solution, to understand what was wrong. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, it does feel good. I've got everything ready for pasta production. I've got the ingredients, the extruder, the dryer, and even the pasta cutter now. Catch up in the next one, bye-bye. Salut. Alex, out. All right, let's talk about today's sponsor, which is Squarespace. Squarespace has the tools you need to get your business off the ground. E-commerce templates, inventory management, a simple checkout process, and secure payments. Whatever you sell, Squarespace has merchandising features to make your products look their best online. SEO helps you maximize prominence among search results. Every Squarespace website and online store comes with a suite of integrated features and useful guides. The mailing list features allows you to get the right message to the right people. You can collect email addresses through your website and send subscribers the information they care about the most with unique mailing lists. So check out squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash French Guide to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Thank you Squarespace for sponsoring this video.